The goal was equity, including wide and persisting racial and economic achievement gaps. When Cambridge Public Schools did away with advanced middle school math classes, but some parents and city leaders are worried it's had the opposite effect. The sticking point has been introductory algebra, which used to be covered in eighth grade advanced math. This past school year, it wasn't covered at all, which makes it harder for students who want to to reach the highest level of math in high school. The superintendent of Cambridge Public Schools, Dr. Victoria Greer, joins me now to discuss. Hello and welcome, Dr. Greer. Well, thank you for having me. Describe a little bit for us how eighth grade math curriculum has changed and what is being offered to students as they come back to school in the fall. Sure, absolutely.、Um, again, thank you for having me. You know, first of all, I, I think that there's some misinformation that、um, would be helpful if we cleared up a little bit.、Um, during my tenure, we actually have not eliminated any math courses.、Um, during the 2019-2020、um, school year, prior to the Um, COVID pandemic,、um, the school district was on track to begin piloting and implementing some of the algebra one units in eighth grade. However, once the pandemic、uh, happened and schools were shut down, and、uh, trying to get everyone back into school, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education made it very clear that they wanted us to focus on specific、um, skills and standards to bring students back into school. The way we've changed that at this point is that we offer a summer program. Um, in the district, where if students、uh, going from eighth grade to ninth grade want to opt out of Algebra One, they can go through that summer program, and then they can opt out of Algebra One in, in ninth grade to、um, either take Geometry or Algebra Two. So we did not eliminate; we had to pause our plan to begin introducing those.、Um, Uh, algebra one units in the eighth grade, and we are planning to begin that implementation in the upcoming school year.、Uh, so, what does that look like in terms of what eighth grade students will receive this fall? Eighth grade students will receive a combination of eighth grade general mathematics, along with three of the algebra one units that we have moved down from the high school into the、uh, upper schools for eighth grade. So basically, it will be a piece of the algebra curriculum that you will be offering three out of how many segments? I think there are like、uh, six or either nine. So, can you talk to me about deleveling? I know that this is sort of the word that inspires all sorts of argument and debate.、Mm -hmm. What that means for the Cambridge School District and.、Um, And why it sparks so much controversy. Deleveling started happening probably almost a decade ago. It started at the high school, and then it、um, it did spiral down、uh, to some of our upper schools. And looking at mathematics in particular, what we were finding is that with the level courses, especially at the high school, that our advanced、uh, courses were predominantly uh, students uh, uh, students who were.、Uh, um, White students from upper middle class to affluent homes, and that the、uh, either the、um, the basic math courses or ma basic courses were mostly students who were from lower income homes or persons of color, and so that was the impetus that led to the conversation at that time to de level. How can we raise the expectation for all and teach everyone at high levels so that we can have a more heterogeneous group of students in our classrooms? That's what it comes down to. How do we create those opportunities that our classrooms are reflective of our school community? Because that is not what was happening,、um, and we have worked really hard to really be thoughtful and intentional about how we do that, knowing that we also do not want to hold any student back from being able to excel. That was never the goal. That was never the plan, and that's definitely not the conversations that we have. Can you?、Uh Empathize though with those parents who might feel, you know, somewhat shortchanged that math standards are changing so much in so many communities.、Mm -hmm. I, I think that、um, Cambridge City Councilor、uh, Patty Nolan has said that you're leveling down in math. Why aren't we giving algebra to all students? Why are we literally putting inequity, baking it into the school day by saying nobody in this school has access to? 
algebra when all of Brookline Public School middle schoolers get access to algebra. All of the students at a lot of independent schools get access to algebra. The students are capable of it given the correct support and appropriate teaching. Ron Ferguson, who led the Achievement Gap Initiative at Harvard University, who's now working on mostly early childhood, but one of the things he said to me, which I found very wise when I said, well, isn't it just about expectations? You know, we need high expectations for our students. He said, that's not enough. Teachers have to have high enough expectations of themselves to be able to teach students to that level. So she said a lot in in a very short time there, and I want to give you a chance to address that because I feel like these are the issues that are not just at the heart of what's going on in Cambridge, but in other districts, including Newton, including Brookline, Mm -hmm. um, about how and when a high-level math gets taught. Sure, absolutely. First, I think one one response I have is that we definitely are not leveling down. Uh, one of the things that I speak of quite often is having high expectations for every student that comes through come through the doors of the Cambridge Public Schools. Um, but we also cannot negate the impact that COVID has had on our return to in-person learning for our students as well as our educators. Um, while we are just as uh, uh, excited to be able to offer higher level mathematics in the ele- in the upper schools. We also are not necessarily ready to do it and do it well. So we want to implement it, implement it in a way in which we give access to all algebra one access to all students, and also do it well so that students are successful by the end of it, and that we will not have to remediate math skills for students. Okay, um, has this appeased any of the critics uh, so far? I know parents have been deeply concerned saying that um, they've talked about how important it is for students who want to take calculus to get a jump on that in eighth grade. We will be having uh, a conversation on August the 8th with our school committee about our proposed plans. Um, So hopefully it will calm some of the challenges that people think that we are having right now. Um, with the with with the transition to bringing those eighth grade um, those algebra one units down to eighth grade, it gives us an opportunity to phase in um, phase those units in. One of the reasons why we've chosen to do that at this point in time is because students are in various levels with their uh, mathematics uh, math math skills, um, and what we are also proposing is we're implementing a new aligned math curriculum, the first time ever in. Canada Cambridge, that we've actually had the same math curriculum at the elementary, middle school, and high school level. So that's actually realigning our mathematical practices and the skills that students will be receiving um, more rigorous math instruction starting even in the earlier grades. And so our idea is as we do that, students will be well ready to take Algebra 1 and 8th grade over the next couple of years based on the realignment of our math curriculum as well as introducing these units earlier um, um, into the eighth grade year. Can you talk about why there is so much miscommunication, why we are seeing um, the message that you're so clearly articulating right now um, uh, not get necessarily heard? I think that it has to do with the fact that I'm sure that there were conversations happening prior to COVID, prior to my administration uh, for for years. And I think that there's this um, tension between we were having those conversations before COVID happened and now us trying to get back on track and also get us to where the original goal was, and that was to have um, students engage in rigorous mathematical practices um, earlier in their school experience. And what do you foresee as the trajectory for the recovery? Absolutely. Uh, one, I, we, we have already received some of our preliminary data to show that our students across grades three through eight in both math and literacy um, are performing and having high growth and high achievement across all grades three through eight. So we're happy to say that I think that we're on track to get our students back to, um, to to the level of educational skills that we want them to have to be able to go off and do great things. But also, I think that our planning and our thoughtfulness and our 
intentional approach to the way that we're implementing high quality curriculum and professional development for our educators to be able to also um, teach these higher level courses are also in line with our students doing well over the next couple of years and us getting to full implementation of Algebra 1 by 8th grade. Have you gotten a sense that people view some of the recovery and the lower test scores as we climb out of the pandemic as also uh, something of an indictment of uh, inclusion programs and efforts to maybe de-level math and make it more equitable in schools? Mm -hmm. And can you tell me your thoughts about that? Sure. Um, I think that um, it's important that we remember that every student, every child that enters our school have the ability to learn at very high levels. We, I'm, I'm a firm believer that if you set the expectation, if you support students, and if you create the opportunities for them, they will rise to our goals and to our expectations for their learning. Um, so actually, I do not agree that inclusion programs or even leveling math actually uh, lessens the rigor. I think that it creates uh, very perspectives in the classrooms. I think that it creates a more collaborative approach to learning. And do you think that that will bring uh, greater opportunities for more children to succeed in math? I really do. I absolutely do believe that. How will it also keep the most advanced learners on course to perform? We believe that with this curriculum, it also will um, ensure that students um, gain stronger skills earlier which means that it will cause us to actually have to scaffold up as students are growing through the grades. And explain to me how that gets done because I get the impression that people are very angry, concerned, scared, you know, that we might be losing uh, competitiveness sure, sure. in this process. Sure. That's not the goal is to lose competitiveness. Um, it's a few ways. So we are in the process and our principals work really hard to design their school schedules. And with that, um, we are having a block in the day that students uh, have opportunities. We are not only just focusing on how do we support students who are not able to uh, access the curriculum at high levels, but also how do we embed supports for students who are ready to advance and have uh, more rigorous um, um, skills being taught to them. Can you talk about why all this is coming up now? It is very funny that you asked that. That was the conversation in the car on my way here. Is We're trying to figure it out. We really do not know. I just think that this conversation has been going on prior to the pandemic, prior to my entry into the district, and there are families that are just ready to see the district move at some point um, and, and have are growing impatient. And what I would say is that we are moving at the pace that we're able to do um, to, to meet everyone's needs, but meet do it in a way that we can be successful, not just put a course in just to say we are offering Algebra 1. We want to offer Algebra 1 so that all students can access it and all students can also get the skills that they need. And just to be clear, we're talking about accessing it in eighth grade by the year. Is there a, a date that you can put or are you waiting for what would, what's your time frame? Our time frame is over the next couple of years. Um, that will be more defined as we have conversations with the school committee on August 8th. Okay. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you.